Good morning, everyone. It's Rabbi Akiva Males, and I hope that you're well. Over the last number of years, it's happened to me on several occasions that I'll receive a phone call from somebody who identifies himself as a, as a, as a Jew, as a member of the Jewish uh, people, uh, who has made some terrible mistakes in life, ended up in prison, and now is in the process of uh, being released from prison and re-entering into society. And they'll reach out to me as a rabbi and say, can I work with you in, this, in your synagogue, in this, uh, in this process of re-entering society? And uh, sadly, every time that I receive a request like this, I decline and I'll tell the person that I wish you the very, very best. However, I'm just not equipped to help in this process and the synagogue is not either equipped to help in this process. But what I can do is tell you about an organization called the Aleph Institute. Uh, the, the one that I'm most familiar with is based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but they've got some branches around the country. And this is something that they are qualified to deal with. They've got a team of professionals that do work with people uh, who are in this predicament, and it's called a re-entry program, helping people, enabling them to re-enter society in some type of, uh, in some type of a healthy way making certain that this, uh, all their needs are being met and nobody, is, nobody will be uh, at risk in the process. A person always has to know what they're qualified to do and what they're not qualified to do. It's clearly not something that I or the shul is qualified to handle, so I'll refer them always to the professionals. Now this Aleph Institute, a couple of years ago, uh, I saw something just, the, the confluence of the timing was just amazing. So every year they would have a symposium for rabbis and professionals who are working with this particular uh, segment of the Jewish population. And uh, a couple of years ago, they were having a symposium. It was, a, it was two days of programming, and it was called the Re-Entry Symposium. It was meant to provide help and assistance for people involved in this process. And the theme that year and the title of the program was called A Second Chance. Why did they choose to call it A Second Chance? Let me just read to you from their email. May 22nd, which corresponds this year with the 14th of Iyar, marks the Jewish holiday of Pesach Sheni, the second Passover. The Torah tells those who missed observing Passover the first time that they are given a second chance to celebrate. The day thus represents the ultimate second chance achieved by Teshuvah, the power of repentance and return. Second Passover means that one is never a lost case. And that's how they titled it. And I thought that was just great, the timing of how that all worked out. But truth be told, today is Pesach Sheni. Today is the 14th of Iyar. We are one month after Erev Pesach, which was the 14th of Nisan. And the Torah tells us specifically that the 14th of Nisan is the day that Klai Yisrael is supposed to bring the Korban Pesach. Many Jews who were unable to bring it approach Moshe Rabbeinu in the Midbar, and they say, Lama Nikara, why should we lose out? We could have been uh, too far away. Obviously, it hasn't happened yet, but when we get to Eretz Yisrael, someone could be too far away from Yerushalayim to uh, have made it there on time to bring the Korban Pesach. Or as the case in the Midbar was, people could have been Tamei Meis. They could have been ritually impure coming into contact with a corpse, and therefore they were not able to bring a Korban Pesach in its allotted time, and they couldn't eat from it at that point either. So give them a month, Moshe Rabbeinu gives them after hearing the instructions from Hashem, and then a month later, they'll have that second chance, they'll be able to bring that Korban Pesach. So many of the Mephorshim uh, run with this theme, that Pesach Sheni is a time to remind each and every one of us that we have a second chance. It's a very unique mitzvah. There's really no other mitzvah in the Torah that works this way. If someone misses Sukkot for whatever reason, there's no idea that a month later they can take their lulav and esrog and fulfill their obligation, or build a sukkah and fulfill that obligation. Pesach is very, very unique in this regard. And it reminds us that everybody deserves a second chance. A few years ago, I found an article that, that really brought this message home to me, not from Pesach Sheni, but from the actual Pesach itself. So many of us have in our homes Sfarim by Rabbi Simcha Bunim Kohn. Rabbi Simcha Bunim Kohn is a, a very prominent Rav and Posek living in Lakewood, New Jersey. This book here is called The Shabbos Kitchen. He has a whole series of Sfarim on Hilcha Shabbos, and they're all uh, written in, in the English language. He does a great job, and uh, they're very, very uh, widely accepted. Now, what um, Rabbi Kohn, uh, a few years ago, I saw he was interviewed in a newspaper, and he was talking about who some of the influences in his life were. And there was one part of this article that made a real impression on me. Rabbi Cohen was saying he grew up in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. 
And growing up there, he had a very close relationship. His family had a close relationship with Rav Moshe Feinstein Zatzal. And it seems like he had attended Rav Moshe's yeshiva and TJ, Masif Tzfaris Yerushalayim as well. And it seems that after high school and after Beis Medrash for a year or two, he went off to learn in Eretz Yisrael, in the famous Mir Yeshiva in Yerushalayim. From the context of this letter, I'm going to guess this is the late 1960s, early 1970s when this takes place. And Rabbi Kohn writes that after having spent two years in Yerushalayim in the yeshiva, he was feeling homesick. And it wasn't just his mom's cooking that he missed, but rather he missed Rav Moshe. He missed Rav Moshe Feinstein, and he was thinking maybe it's time to come back to continue his learning with Rav Moshe. But at the same time, he was doing terrific in yeshiva and Yerushalayim. He was in the shir, he writes, of Rav Nachum, the famous Rav Nachum Partzavitz in the Mir Yeshiva. And he said he was really growing in his learning. Rav Nachum's shir was... was um, celebrated and people people loved attending his shir and he said he was growing from it but at the same time he felt a real longing to come back to new york to to continue his learning and his relationship with Rav Moshe feinstein so he was in a quandary what should he do so he recorded he had a tape recorder and he he, he recorded a tape to Rav Moshe explaining the dilemma what he felt were the advantages of staying in Eretz Yisrael or the advantages of coming back to new york and he mailed that tape to Rav Moshe feinstein again you know this is this is something that a kid studying in Eretz Yisrael today would have a very, very difficult time relating to. Just pick up your cell phone and, and, or WhatsApp, whatever it may be. But be that as it may, he sent a tape to Rav Moshe uh, asking what he should do. So Rav Moshe immediately, uh, upon listening to the tape, he contacts Rabbi Kohn's father. And Rabbi Kohn's father, this is the message he gives Rabbi Kohn's father. He says, tell your son to stay in Yerushalayim. He says, Miman of Shach, either way it goes. We're all davening every day that Mashiach should come. So if Mashiach comes, I'll be in Yerushalayim with him, and we could rekindle our relationship there, and we could learn with each other there. And if Chas V'Shalom, Mashiach does not come, so I'll still be here in another year. So tell your son, enjoy another year of learning in Israel, and then we'll come back, we'll reunite then, if, that, if that's what, what should happen, Mashiach doesn't come. That's what, that's what his father relays to Rabbi Kohn. Shortly thereafter, Rabbi Kohn writes that he was amazed that in the mail, he receives a tape, a tape recording from Rav Moshe Feinstein. And it's a tape, it was, it was recorded right before Pesach that year, and Rav Moshe was uh, speaking to him, offering him words of chizuk, words of encouragement, as he would continue to, to study in, in Israel. And he also shared with him an incredible Devar Torah, a thought about Pesach. And what was astonished me about this is that it's, it's a real thought of Musr, a real thought of introspection, but what's it based on? It's based on halacha. Rav Moshe pulled this out of the halacha. And Rav Kohn writes as follows. He says, Rav Moshe told him, he says he was going over the laws, Hilchas Pesach, in preparation for Pesach, and he came to Hechsher Kalim. That's the process of how we can take our utensils. Some utensils can be kashered. We can say, even though they were used with chametz during the year, there's a way to kasher them for Pesach. And Rav Moshe says, sometimes they need libun. They need to be uh, subject to intense flame and that type of heat to get out the chametz that was in it. And other types of kalim, depending on how they were used and what they were made of, they could be kashered with hagala, which is not as severe. It involves um, uh, dipping it into a, a pot of, of water that's at a rolling boil and purging it that way. So he says, but they could be kashered nonetheless. And he says, look at the Gavaldika, look at the lesson that we get from this. You have something which is the antithesis of Pesach. Kalim, that had absorbed Pe uh, chametz, that's the antithesis of Pesach. And yet, we see Halacha provides for this process called Hechsher Kalim, that says that they can be made Pesach friendly. So Rav Moshe says, what a limud, we should take this Halacha and apply it to ourselves. Every single one of us, we're human beings, we're not angels, we make mistakes. There are things that happen in the course of a day, which we sit back and we reflect upon and we realize, wow, I, that was a bad blunder on my part. I lost that battle with the Yetzir Hara. I, I, I didn't have the day that I wanted to have. Today, I was not the Jew that I want to be. But what does Heksher Kalim teach us? Is that if a utensil, which had become soaked with chametz, could become kasher le Pesach, every single Jew, every single Jew has a neshama. We have a part in us that's from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That it's a, it's a chilek of HaKadosh Baruch It's a part of Hashem inside every one of us. And yes, we could have made a mistakes, but if kalim of utensils could be kashered and made kasher le Pesach, every single one of us, we have the opportunity through the gift of tshuva, through the gift of returning to HaKadosh Baruch and reestablishing a relationship with him, that we have the ability to say, yes, I made mistakes yesterday, but I'm turning a new leaf. I'm going to be a new person today. 
And none of us should ever fall into that trap of throwing in the towel. I thought that was a beautiful idea from Rav Moshe. In other words, yes, Pesach Sheni uh, teaches us about second chances. But Rav Moshe is saying, even Pesach, the original Pesach, and the concept, the halachas of, of Heksher Kalim teach us about second chances. And none of us should ever fall into a state of despair. I want to share with you one final thought. The Haftorah that's going to be read for Parshas Emor this week is taken from the Navi Yecheskel. And Yecheskel's job, what his career consisted of, was he came into this world towards the end of Bayis Rishon, towards the end of the first base Hamikdash, when Klal Yisrael was steeped in idolatry. He was living at a time speaking to, speaking to Bnei Yisrael, where the, the ten tribes had become inundated with idolatry. It was making its, its, its uh, entrance into Malchus Yehuda as well. And Yechez Kalanavi is trying his best that he can to beg Klal Yisrael to get away from this destructive lifestyle and return to the ways of HaKadosh Baruch the Torah and the mitzvahs. And as much as he's warning Klai Yisrael about the impending destruction that will occur if they don't take this path, he's also reminding them uh, very vigorously that HaKadosh Baruch has given us this gift of tshuva, that every single one of us has the ability to renew our relationship with Hashem and to, and to get a fresh start. And I want to share with you one passage from Yecheskel Anavi. And this is quoted, it was so powerful, that Rabbeinu Yona, the great Rishon, who wrote Sharei Tshuva, that fundamental work on return and renewing their relationship with Hashem, he goes to Yecheskel for inspiration. Because in the back of Sharei Tshuva, Rabbeinu Yona also wrote something called Yisoda Tshuva. Yisoda Tshuva is basically the ultimate fundamentals of Tshuva, what we have to know in a nutshell about Tshuva. Let me read to you a few lines of what he writes. He says, V'al yidameh hashav v'nafsho lomar. No one who's engaged in the process of tshuva should ever make the fatal mistake of, of saying the following statement. Why am I wasting my time trying to clean up my act? For not, all these efforts are going to be for nothing. How can it possibly be that my act of repentance is going to stand in the place of all those terrible mistakes that I've made? Whatever I accomplish through tshuva can't possibly offset the terrible sins and all the bad mistakes that, and the poor choices that I've made. Al Yomar Kane, don't say this. This is our Yetzer Hara's trick to try to prevent us from moving forward. Don't fall into this trap. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu promised, He guaranteed us through Yechezkel HaNavi, Ki pish'eim lo yizkuru od, yizachru od, that if we engage in sincere tshuva, none of our sins will be remembered before HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And now he quotes from Perak Yud Ches in Yechezkel, and he quotes from two psukim here, Chafalot and Chafbez, 21 and 22. Let me read you those psukim. Yechezkel HaNavi writes, Veharasha ki yashuv mi kol chatosav, if someone was wicked, if someone made terrible mistakes, and they honestly repent and they return from all the sins Asher saw that they committed, the Shamar is kol chukasai, and he observes all my decrees of Asa Mishpat Utztaka, and practices justice and righteousness, then chayo yichyev lo yamus, this person will surely live and will not be, and will not be killed. Next pasuk, kol pisha'av Asher Asa lo yizachru lo, all the transgressions, all the terrible mistakes that this person made will not be remembered against him. But rather, this person will live because of all the deeds of righteousness that he's done. Yecheskel Anavi is telling us, don't ever throw in the towel. He says, I have a havtacha, I've got a guarantee from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That even if we've made poor choices, even if we've made terrible mistakes, even if we have not used our time wisely, and we've taken the opportunities Hashem has given us, and we have squandered them, and we've made poor, terrible choices. Nonetheless, we could always turn a new leaf. We have the ability to say, that was yesterday, that's not who I really am, that's not who I want to be. I'm starting fresh, I'm starting anew, I'm recommitting myself to Torah and to mitzvahs. That was the message of Yecheskel Anavi. And that's what Rav Moshe Feinstein was telling us we could learn from Hilchus Pesach. If kalim, if utensils that were filled with chametz could become kasher le Pesach, all of us, as a Jew, every single one of us, even if we were male avonos, even if we were filled with sins and poor choices and mistakes, we could become kosher again. We could become close. We can renew, refresh our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu and become close to Him once again. And the ultimate reminder of that is Pesach Sheni. Pesach Sheni reminds us that we all have a second chance. Every single one of us, the, 
We have never hit the point of no return. We have the ability to reconnect. So on this Shabbos going into Emor, or today is, is, is Pesach Sheni, and it's also the Shabbos where we'll be, we'll be having a friendly reunion with Yecheskel Anavi. As we read the Haftorah, let's remember what Yecheskel Anavi taught us, and let's remember that none of us have ever hit the point of no return. We all have the ability to turn a new leaf, get a fresh start, a new beginning, and Pesach Sheni reminds us everyone deserves a second chance, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God's just waiting for us to take that opportunity. Have a good Shabbos and a happy Pesach Sheini, everyone. Let's make the most of it.